So archaea are one of three domains, as you can see in the phylogenetic tree of life I've created here. They evolved and split from bacteria and eventually formed eukaryotes through endosymbiosis. Archaea are not often spoken about in pop culture as much as bacteria and other organisms. They were only recently discovered in 1977. They're quite a diverse group of organisms and a high number of them are extremophiles. Now what's strange is that in each kingdom we see pathogens all across the board. We see them most notably in the bacterial world, amongst the protists, fungi, plants, animals, and even in proteins in the form of prions. Now it's hard to put an estimate as to exactly how many archaeal pathogens we'd expect to find. About 0.36% of all currently known bacteria are pathogenic. This includes uncultured and unspecified strains. So using this as a rough sort of basis, of the 4,508 current archaeal species, we would expect to find about 16 that are pathogenic. But as of yet, we have no confirmed pathogenic archaeal species. So why is that? One possible reason may lie in the difficulty of horizontal gene transfer in the archaeal species. For example, in bacteria, virulence factors from bacteriophages that have encoded themselves into the newly synthesized DNA of bacteria are transferred via horizontal gene transfer. This is how virulence genes spread to benign bacteria, which can help accelerate their growth and population. So it's worth remembering that both the virus and the bacteria are merely vectors for these virulence genes that are spreading throughout the population. Now archaea do contain their own viruses that are specific to them, but they are, have evolved independently of the bacterial phages, which does make them different in morphology. And the study of these types of viruses are in their early stages. And it very well may be possible that the evolution of such vicious viral phages may just be quite rare and may have evolved independently in bacteria and not in archaea. Bacteria also do have a much faster growth rate, which may result in a faster adaptation to antibiotics and other immune responses in organisms. And of course, more horizontal gene transfer, which means a greater spread of these virulent genes. This may result in more pathogens than archaea. As for a possible structural explanation, uh, the polar lipids in the cell walls of archaea are attached to triglycerides via ether bonds, unlike the ester bonds um, and fatty acid chains you see in bacteria and eukarya. So this property has actually been shown to show positive results in boosting immunity of archaea. There is a link to this study below in the description. So this may have hindered the evolution and adaptation of archaeal phages. It's also worth mentioning, as stated earlier, the majority of archaeal species are in fact extremophiles. This means that possible pathogenic archaea may not be living in the same sort of conditions as most of life on Earth, nor would we even have the ability to study these in great detail. So at this stage, archaea at best appear to be more of an indirect catalyst to other diseases rather than being a direct cause. There have been observed to have been more archaeal numbers in people suffering from such diseases as periodontis, arthritis, and even in conditions like Crohn's disease. So those are some possible reasons for the lack of pathogenesis in archaea as of yet. But as said earlier, it is still quite early in the studies of archaea and it very well may be that we do discover archaeal pathogens out there on Earth. So thanks for listening and remember to subscribe as I'll be rolling through more random science videos.